Hey guys, it's Miss Gibson. The first book we're going to read is called Holidays Around the World. It's written by Erin Ash Sullivan. And remember, this is a nonfiction book, so that means that everything that we're going to read about is real. So before we get started, what I want you to do is just flip through all the pages. I want you to look at the pictures, look at some of the headings, and you can think about what this book might be about. After that, we're going to actually get started and read it together. So I hope you like it. We're going to start by looking at our front inside cover. First, you can see our big idea. For the people of different cultures, holidays and traditions provide continuity and a sense of community across time. Then our social studies objectives. Identify the different events or people celebrated by holidays around the world. Describe the various ways in which different communities celebrate and explain the importance of holidays and traditions. Then you can see our box that says, consider this. What comes to mind when you think about the 4th of July? How about Thanksgiving or Memorial Day? These national holidays celebrate events or people in our country's history. People all around the world have holidays and traditions of their own. Read on to find out about some of these exciting events. Then underneath that, you can see our content vocabulary. Our vocabulary words for this book are ancestor, armor, bonfire, celebrate, gourd, harvest, holiday, maypole, shrine, symbol, tradition, and wreath. We're going to talk about those a little later. On the next page, you can see our index. This tells us what we're going to be looking for in the next four chapters. Then we can turn the page to our introduction. What are some of your favorite days of the year? Some of them might be holidays. Holidays are special days that people celebrate. People have a good time on holidays. Why do people have holidays? Sometimes people honor special times in the history of their country. Sometimes people celebrate a change in the seasons. Why do people enjoy celebrations? They are an exciting change from daily life. People get together. Sometimes they have parties. There might be music and dancing, and there is good food to eat. In this book, you'll read about different holidays around the world. You'll also learn about different traditions. Traditions are special ways of celebrating that have been passed down through the years. You'll also see that there is one thing that all celebrations have in common. They're fun! And if you look at the caption under our picture, it says, in Mexico, people celebrate Cinco de Mayo. It is an important holiday. Celebrations in Africa. Nigeria, fishing festival. Some people think it's hard to catch fish with a fishing pole. Now imagine trying to catch a fish with only a net and a hollowed out gourd, a round fruit like a squash or a pumpkin. That's what happens every February at the Argangu Fishing Festival in Nigeria, where people come to celebrate the harvest. Hundreds of men gather for a fishing contest. They line up along the riverbank. Then the contest starts. The men dash into the water. They use their nets to catch the fish. They use the gourds to hold the fish after they have been caught. Imagine the excitement. Boats carry drummers beating their drums. Other men rattle gourds filled with seeds. They believe the noise will make the fish move to shallow water. Who wins the contest? It is the person who catches the biggest fish. Now you can see our page insert. This is Math Matters. At one fishing festival, it took four men to lift the winning fish onto the scale. It weighed 165 pounds. That's about the weight of a grown man. If you look at our picture caption, it says the fishing contest is short. It's over in just one hour. And you can also see a map where it shows that Nigeria lies on the western coast of Africa. Ghana, yam festival. What kind of food do you eat most often? If you lived in Ghana, you would eat lots of yams. A yam is a sweet, starchy vegetable that looks a little like a potato. It's one of the most important foods in Ghana. Every year, the people of Ghana celebrate the yam harvest with a big festival. The festival is full of traditions that are hundreds of years old. 
Before the festival, people in each village go to the river to wash special stools. The stools honor ancestors, people in a family who have died. People use the stools to remember their ancestors and show respect to their family. Then people clean their homes. They also close the roads to the village to keep bad spirits away. Some villagers carefully dig up the new yams. They bring the yams to the chief, who blesses them. After this happens, the festival can begin. People start to cook. Delicious smells float through the village. That night, everyone feasts. There is drumming and dancing. People are thankful that there is plenty of food and that the harvest has gone well. If you look at our page insert, again it says Math Matters. We can see a pie graph. The graph shows the kinds of foods that people usually eat in Ghana. How is this similar to what you eat every day? How is it different? And the different parts of the graph are for cereals, roots and other tubers, yams, fruits, vegetables, and nuts, and fats and sugars. If we look at the pictures, you can see a map that shows Ghana is on the western coast of Africa. Then you can see a picture of yams. The caption says that like potatoes, yams grow under the ground. And in Ghana, stools are more than just places to sit. They're special pieces of furniture that are used in celebrations. Celebrations in Asia. China, the Chinese New Year. It is February. Noise from music and fireworks fills the air. The smell of food cooking fills your nose. Everywhere you look, you can see the color red. What holiday is this? It's the Chinese New Year. Chinese people think of the New Year as a new beginning. They clean their houses. They give their doors and windows a fresh coat of red paint. People believe that the color red brings good luck. Red stands for strength and energy. Parents give their children red envelopes with money inside for good luck. The night before the new year, families eat a special meal. They eat dried oysters, seaweed, and dumplings. At midnight, there are fireworks. Chinese New Year is a fun celebration. It is a time when people plan for the future. How is this like your own New Year celebration? We can see our page inserts. It's a fact. Chinese New Year is on a different day in January or February every year. That's because the Chinese calendar is different from the one used in the US and Canada. And at the top, math matters. Some dragon puppets can be up to 100 feet long. That's longer than two school buses. And finally, we can see our pictures with captions. We can see a map of China it tells us that more people live in China than any other country in the world. And one of the best parts of Chinese New Year is the Dragon Parade. The dragon is a symbol of strength and good luck. Japan, Girls' Day and Boys' Day. Sometimes it's fun to celebrate just being you. In Japan, people celebrate the girls and boys in their families with Girls' Day and Boys' Day. These celebrations have been around for hundreds of years. It's one way for Japanese people to be thankful that their children are happy and healthy. Your page insert is a point to talk about. Do you think the United States should have a Girls' Day and Boys' Day? If so, how would you celebrate? And you can discuss that answer with someone at home. Girls' Day is on March 3rd. This day is also called the Doll Festival. Every family has a special set of dolls dressed in old Japanese costumes. These dolls are passed down from mother to daughter. On Girls' Day, families put the dolls in a shrine. A shrine is a place where people put special objects. Each of the dolls goes in a special place in the shrine. Girls' Day is a day full of food and parties. There are parties at school. Families get together. People eat diamond shake rice cakes. As soon as Girls' Day is over, families take down the doll shrine. They believe it is bad luck to leave the dolls out after March 3rd. And if you look at our pictures, Every Girls' Day doll has a special place in the shrine, and you can see the shrine. And there's also a map that shows us where Japan is. Japan is a small island nation off the coast of Asia. Boys' Day is on May 5th. People put out small model soldiers. Often the models are very old. They have been passed down from father to son over the years. Families also put out small models of old weapons and armor. Armor is the special covering worn by soldiers for protection. 
There is also special food to eat on Boys' Day. There are dumplings and rice cakes with sweet bean paste. These foods are eaten every year on Boys' Day. Children in Japan look forward to Girls' Day and Boys' Day each year. What a great way to make girls and boys feel special. If we look at our pictures, we can see on the left-hand side, a carp is a kind of fish. On Boys' Day, every family puts up a special bamboo pole with paper carp attached like flags. There is one carp for each boy in the family. And with the other picture, one of the most popular Boys' Day soldiers is Kintaro. He was a Japanese boy who grew up to be a general. And our page insert, it's a fact. There's another Japanese holiday for children called 753. It celebrates children who are 7, 5, and 3 years old. Japanese people believe that odd numbers, like 7, 5, and 3, are lucky. On this holiday, it is a tradition for children to get three long candies in a bag. India, Holi. You wake up one morning and look out your window. You see a group of children covered in paint. What's going on? If you lived in India, you would know that people are celebrating Holi. Holi celebrates the wheat harvest. The harvest is the time when crops are ripe and ready to be picked. In India, Holi is a time for games, parties, jokes, and fun. On Holi, people build piles of wood. Then they light the wood to make huge bonfires. People gather around the bonfires. They laugh and tell stories. For children, the best part of Holi is the paint. Children cover each other with different colors of paint powder called gulal. Then they squirt colored water at each other. They use hoses, buckets, and even water guns. It's like a huge water fight. By the end, everyone is wet and covered in a rainbow of colors. Holi is a day to celebrate friendships and have fun. But watch out for that paint. With our page insert, we see a historical perspective. The tradition of throwing paint powder, or gulal, comes from very old stories about an Indian god named Krishna. Krishna liked to play jokes on people, and he liked to throw colored water on his friends. Today, people remember these ancient stories by throwing gulal at each other on Holi. If we look at our pictures with captions, we can see India is a large country in Asia. Part of India is a peninsula. And on the other side, after everyone gets covered with paint, it's time to clean up. People put on fresh clothes and visit friends. Celebrations in Europe. Sweden, St. Lucia's Day. If you're a child living in Sweden, you probably wake up early on December 13th. It's the festival of St. Lucia and you have an important job to do. On St. Lucia's Day, the oldest girl in the house puts on a beautiful white dress. She ties a red sash around her waist. Then she puts a wreath, a circle of leaves, on her head. The wreath has battery-powered candles on top. Boys put on special outfits, too. They wear white robes and special hats decorated with stars. Then it's off to the kitchen. The children bring their parents breakfast in bed. What's to eat? The children make special St. Lucia's buns, called lusicates. The buns can be shaped like a backward letter S. The children serve the lusicates with hot coffee. Sometimes there are ginger cookies, too. The children serve the food and sing special songs for St. Lucia's Day. Children also bring lusicates to their teachers at school. Many towns have St. Lucia's Day parades. The children wear their special outfits. People get together to share meals and enjoy the winter season. If we look at our page insert, we can see another historical perspective. St. Lucia's Day is a way to celebrate the light during the dark days of winter. Long ago, people celebrated with candles. Today, they use electric lights. If we look at our pictures, on the left-hand side, you can see, dressed in their white dresses, dresses and red sashes, these girls are performing St. Lucia's Day and Christmas songs. On the other page, lusicates are a special treat for St. Lucia's Day. England, May Day. May Day is May 1st. After the long winter, people in England look forward to spring. The weather is warmer. Plants and flowers grow again. It's a good time to celebrate the change in seasons. Many villages celebrate May Day with a big festival. The people choose a girl to be the May Queen. People play games and hold contests. A favorite part of May Day is the Maypole. It's a tall, thin pole with long ribbons that hang down from the top. 
people gather around the maypole. Each person takes the end of one of the ribbons. As the people walk around the maypole, the ribbons make a beautiful pattern. Long ago, the maypole dance was a symbol for the change of the seasons. Today, it's a fun tradition that everyone enjoys. Another part of the May Day celebration is Morris dancing. Morris dancing has been a tradition in England for hundreds of years. Morris dancers sometimes dance with swords. Many years ago, the sword dances may have helped the dancers practice for battle. If we look at our pictures with captions, we can see a map that shows England is an island country. Under that, maypole dancing is one tradition of the May Day celebration. These children are performing at Leeds Castle in England. On the other page, sometimes Morris dancers wear special shoes called clogs. Sometimes they use sticks and handkerchiefs as part of their dance. Celebrations in North America. Mexico, Cinco de Mayo. Mexico is a fun place to be on May 5th. It's Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo means the 5th of May in Spanish. On this day, Mexicans remember a famous battle that happened in 1862. The French army tried to invade Mexico. The Mexicans fought back and won the battle. In Mexico, Cinco de Mayo is a day to celebrate Mexican independence. It's also a day to celebrate Mexican culture. Many towns have Cinco de Mayo parades. People dress up in special clothes and play Mexican music. Everywhere you look, you can see bright colors. People have Cinco de Mayo parties. They eat delicious traditional foods such as tortillas. Tortillas are thin round cakes made of corn or flour. There are also tamales, which are made of meat or vegetables wrapped in dough and then boiled in a corn husk. Many foods are flavored with spicy red peppers. Cinco de Mayo is also celebrated in many parts of the United States. It's a reminder that people in different parts of the world share traditions. If you look at our picture captions, we can see a map that shows Mexico is just south of the United States. Then you can see children look forward to hitting the pinata during Cinco de Mayo. Then you can see our page insert that says, picture it. Reread this page. Draw a picture of some of the things you might see on Cinco de Mayo. Can't wait to see them. Now for our conclusion. Around the world, people enjoy holidays and celebrations. We look forward to getting together with friends and family. We enjoy going to parties and eating delicious foods. Year after year, every country celebrates its own special traditions. When you learn about a country's holidays, you also learn about the people who live there. This chart lists all the holidays that you have read about in this book. Take a closer look. How are some of these holidays the same? How are they different? So our chart has the country, the holiday, and what it celebrates. We have Nigeria has the fishing festival, it celebrates the harvest. Ghana has the yam festival, it celebrates the yam harvest. China has Chinese New Year, and it celebrates a new beginning. Japan has Boys and Girls Days, it celebrates children. India has the holy, has holy for ho their holiday, and it celebrates the wheat harvest. Sweden has St. Lucia's Day, and it celebrates light during the dark winter. England has May Day, and it celebrates the coming of spring. And finally, Mexico has Cinco de Mayo, and it celebrates Mexican independence and culture. On the next page, you can see our glossary. It goes back to our concept vocabulary and tells you how to pronounce the words and what they mean, so you can look over that. And then on the inside back cover, it says write in your social studies journal. You're going to choose one of the following prompts to write about in your journal. Make drawings, charts, or other graphic features to help you organize your thoughts. So you can do this on a sheet of paper, you can type it up, but as long as you pick one out of these four questions to answer. Number one, you have read about many holidays and traditions. Write about the one you would most like to celebrate. Explain the reasons for your choice. What might you do as part of your celebration? We're making connections. Option two, review the text. What is the main idea of each chapter? How do you know? They're going to identify the main idea and supporting details. Option three, review the text. Explain why holidays and traditions are important to people. 
They're going to identify the main idea and supporting details. In option four, the author has told us about the holidays and traditions celebrated on different continents. She has used many photographs to support the information. What do you think is the author's purpose in writing this book? How do you think she feels about the celebration of holidays around the world? Use evidence from the book to support your answers. So they are going to evaluate the author's purpose and point of view. I can't wait to see your journals. Now that we've read Holidays Around the World, we're going to go a little deeper. You're going to look on the front inside cover of your book at your content vocabulary. It's going to be right there. So our vocabulary words are upside down, ancestor, armor, bonfire, celebrate, gourd, harvest, holiday, maypole, shrine, symbol, tradition, and wreath. So what you guys are going to do is first you're going to read over those words. If you need help pronouncing the words, just ask. We'll go over it again. You can replay this video. So I want you to go through our book and find what page each of those words is on. When you can find each vocabulary word, you're going to read it in the sentence that it's with and make sure you understand what it means. Then you're going to make a list. If you still don't know exactly what some of those words mean, make a list. And then you're going to let me know which words you need a little more help with. And we'll do another video and go over those. Next, you're going to take your reading journal and turn to page five. This is a sheet for you to write about your favorite part from the book you read. So again, we're looking at holidays around the world. So you're going to look back through holidays around the world, find your favorite part. So in this case, it could be your favorite holiday that was discussed in our book. And you're going to go to page five in your reading journal, and you are going to write about your favorite part. So you're going to say what your favorite part of the book was, or your favorite holiday, and why. So you're going to write out my favorite part was, and fill in those blanks. And then, this is because, so you're going to tell why that was your favorite part of our book. And then the last part says this occurs on pages. So you're going to find the exact pages in this book. So you can write about what pages this particular event or holiday was on. So you guys take your reading journal. Go ahead and do that. And you can take a picture of it and send it to me so I can look at it. Awesome.